so that I don't look like I'm dead over here. All right. So I am just waiting for a couple more people to pop on. There's usually a few more people waiting. I know that Sheila is here because she has joined me in the comments. So welcome, Sheila. Hope your day was good. Um, I hope you got lots of stamping in. I think Friday is usually your stamping day. The day you like to just kick back, relax, and have some little ink therapy. How about the rest of you? What's your favorite day to craft? I know any day is a good day, but when do you get to? That's what's, that's the important question. Oh, I just saw that one of my lights is not on. Hold on. Oh, look, now the light is even on me. It doesn't necessarily help, but it doesn't necessarily hurt either. Reba is here. Hey, Reba. So let's see, tonight I have a pretty quick and simple card for you. Uh, I think you're gonna love it. It is actually a sneak peek of not the card that I'm doing in my two dozen for, you know, two dozen and two hours class, but it is a, um, it is the layout of one of the cards. So my two dozen in two hours class is coming up on November 18th. And it is uh, in person in Sanford, but it can also be a class by mail. So if you want to create a lot of cards with a little bit of time, um, whether you're in person or, or not, you can. Uh, if you are not in person and want to do it, however, you'll need your own inks and um, you'll need your coordinating inks and your uh, sentiments. But... I'm going to provide the labels and the card bases and the DSP and a full package of embellishments and a full spool of ribbon. So I hope you'll join me on the 18th. The deadline for that is coming up on Sunday. So you have to be signed up by Sunday at 5 p.m. Although, you know, really probably seven realistically is fine. Um, maybe even nine. We'll see when I get to things. Let me just see who else is here. Uh, um, Sheila, you worked outside getting ready for winter. Uh, sorry, but it is a necessity, right? Um, our our lawn is so deep in, with leaves, it's crazy. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't think I recall there being this many leaves. There probably is, but maybe it's just because we haven't kept on it very much. But it is like, it is just leaves just leaves. I'm a little scared to walk because I've got a dog, so I'm a little scared to walk, if you know what I mean. All right, well, let's get started here. I'm going to turn you down, so let's uh, let's do that here, and I'm going to just adjust this a little bit so that you can see my work surface and not my camera stand. Oh, that's not my camera stand. That's my silicone mat. All right, so let me put the lights back down. Here we go. I am starting with the brushed gold cards and envelopes. So this is something that I think a lot of people might have missed in the catalog if it weren't for the index on page 76, because over here on page 34, there, there are these cards and envelopes here, but it's really easy to miss because it's, it's just like tucked right in here. It almost looks like a note. It doesn't really look like it's a product because we're used to looking at the stamps and the dies, but we're not used to looking at some of these other things. So um, you can see that they are in that index section as well. And it is $12 for a package, and you get 20 card bases and 20 envelopes. So it comes like this, and you can fold it in half, and here's your front. But did you know that you don't have to use this as the front? You could fold it inside out and then put a little layer in here so that it gives the inside a little decoration too. I'm not gonna do that tonight because I really want the, the gold showing on the outside, but you do have that option. All right, so let's see. What we're gonna do is I'm also gonna introduce you to a 
designer series paper, well, specialty paper from that same catalog. And this is the Shining Brightly paper. And what you need to know about this is that it is single-sided. So it is not the double-sided that you're used to seeing here, but it is navy and gold and vanilla, which is such a pretty color combination. I flipped it over out of habit, but remember, it is one-sided. And then here's another gold piece. And here's another gold design. So there are three gold and vanilla designs. And then you'll find there are three of the same designs just in Night of Navy background. So see, this is the same as this one. These two are the same except for the base color. And then obviously these two are the same except for the base color. I'll be using this sheet and I've already got a piece cut for you because by now I hope you know how to cut but if you don't um, you can watch a couple of my other videos I do show that that process quite often I'm going to try to put my paper away right now so I don't continue to add to the mess that is in my room right now so I took a picture and uploaded it not too long ago about uh, having to unpack from my craft fair. That didn't happen. I got, I got distracted. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm going to bring in this piece of the Knight of Navy with the stars. This measures four inches by five and a quarter. So it's just a quarter of an inch left. And so you can see you've got this nice little interest over here. Just, just something different, right? I'm gonna adhere this down. You can use your adhesive of choice. Most of you know by now that it's my green glue that is my adhesive of choice. I'm just gonna put that right on there, centered as best I can. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Now I also have a piece of vellum. Now this piece of vellum is four inches wide. I don't, um, I don't care how tall it is. That kind of depends on your sentiment. This particular piece I have is about three inches tall. So this looks to be like four by three. I am using a sentiment from a retired stamp set. And um, the reason why I'm doing that is because the sentiment that I want to use and will be using in my two dozen and two hours class, the joy to you set is not in, it is not at my house currently. So I need to wait for that. Um, but these, what's great about these is you've got this, this big bold letters. We talked about this last week. And uh, so I'm just showing you again how um, you can use these kinds of sentiments to really do most of the work for you. All right, so we're going to take our embossing additions toolkit because there's an embossing buddy in there. Oh, wait, before I do that, I want to rip. I'm going to rip across here. I'm going to rip across here. Now I'm using my embossing buddy because I've been handling this vellum and I don't want any of the oils from my hand or static to um, take the embossing powder where I don't want it. And I'm gonna get out the love and joy come to you and may it last the whole year through. Sentiment. And let's see if this block is large enough. It is if I put it on the diagonal. I'm going to get out my Versamark pad. I have several. They're all the same. So Versamark is just a really sticky pad. Clear ink. Just going to put that down there. Now you can't really see it. 
where I've stamped, but it is there. I'm gonna take the other tools in the toolkit and set them aside. I've got some gold embossing powder here and the cover, ignore that. This just means this bottle is really old. Embossing powder lasts for quite a long time. One of these days I'm gonna break down and get the metallics because I'm missing the copper. I wish I had that or bronze, which one, whichever one it is that's in that collection. And honestly, the gold, when it's fresher, um, does have a little bit of a different tint, a little bit brighter tint to it. It's like this oxidizes a bit. It will still look beautiful. Promise you. I'm going to take my heat tool. and just heat this and you'll know that it's time to move your heat tool along once you see it pop to a shiny gold like it's doing right now let's see i can capture that on camera I'm turn it around oh yeah i think you're seeing it And you don't want to go too long because if you go too long, it will sink into, like melt into the paper and it will no longer be raised. But this now is a beautiful raised image and it doesn't take very long to dry. In fact, I can touch it right now and it's not burning me and it's not smudging. All right, now the problem with adhering this, see, isn't that going to look pretty? Um, in fact, I might want to... You might want to just take a little bit more. You can rip before, you can rip after. It doesn't really matter. You might want to just take a little bit more off here. Get a little bit of a thinner strip. Oh, and now the top is a little too much. So tell me in the comments, have you played with vellum very much? Do you like playing with vellum? Reba, what do you say? So the problem with vellum, though, is that when you attach it, it's going to show the adhesive. Oh, I meant to trim this down, too. I wanted it to be four inches wide, but apparently it was not. So I'm going to try my best to take an, imp, an eighth of an inch off each side so that it really is four inches wide. There we go. Much easier when you start the way you want it to. All right. So that's just going to adhere over the top just like that. But again, we don't want our adhesive to show. So if you have like a great place for a glue dot would be under this ampersand here. And if you're using, um, if you're using a stamp set like the one I talked about in here, Joy to You. There are some bolder letters that you might be able to hide a glue dot behind. However, if you get your little silicone mat out, you can use that. Now, the purpose of the silicone mat is nothing sticks to it. Well, things stick to it, but it comes right off. So I had used some glue before, but look, if I just rub my hands over this, it wipes right off. All that adhesive comes off. And it's nice and clean, doesn't stick. Here you can do this in baking too, but since, you know, I don't really frequent the kitchen very much because I'm always in here, um, we don't talk about that. All right, gotta get the cat hair off there. That's crash hair, I could tell because it was so light. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my glue and just put a little bit down. And then I'm going to take a sponge. Now you can take a makeup sponge or, you know, any kind of sponge. We used to sell these sponges. We don't sell them anymore. I'm just going to dab that in there. And on the reverse side, I'm going to just dab the, dab the glue all over it, making sure that I don't put any of my cat hair on the card. Those cats. i got to leave my stuff alone. 
just so I'm just spreading out the glue. I can I can see the sponge marks, but I don't see any big globs. And I don't know if you could hear that, but it's very sticky. I'm just gonna lay this down now on here. And this glue does dry clear. But you're really not going to see it, or if you see it, you're, you're going to notice that it's it's pretty even over the whole thing. So it might look textured, but it's an even texture. And the last thing we're going to do with this is get out our star trinkets. Oop, there's a little sheep hanging along for the ride. And let's see. Oh. And then get my take your pick tool out. I'm just going to use my scissors. Let's go ahead and take one of the big stars off. And we'll put that right on the side here, I think. Just to give it a little bit of an accent, a little gold balance on that side to balance the gold off of this side. We got to do something for the inside. And when you are Cutting a piece off, so this was the this was a four inch wide piece, and I cut it was four by twelve, and I cut five and a quarter off. So that means there's a three quarter inch. It would bring it to the six mark. So this one's going to give me another card of the same thing if I want it. So I can come in here. And I can just lay this at the bottom, or at the top, I suppose, or on the side. But I don't really like the side because it's too short for the side. I usually like it at the bottom. So I'm just going to put that on there. We do need an inside sentiment, of course. Let me just go back to the set, damp set. Usually if you have a Christmas sentiment, set there's some outsides and there's some insides so i'm i'm just gonna write merry christmas inside it's it's almost like the greeting on the outside is on the inside and the one that was most people probably thinking was the inside sentiment is on my outside i'm gonna take my knight of navy ink to go with the knight of navy paper Get that out of the way before I'm, I have Knight of Navy hands. And there we go. Merry Christmas. Plenty of room to write a little something special to whoever the recipient is. And let's see, where's where'd my envelope go? Oh, right up here in front. So we have this pretty card with this envelope. And that is a pretty quick project. So Reba, you say have some, you have some vellum but haven't used it. Oh, well, thanks. I'm glad you love what I do with it. You need to use it. Now, the other thing that you can do if you don't want to put glue down at all is you can cut a longer piece and wrap it around. I think we did that recently anyway. Um, you can try that method as well. And um, that works too. But another place that you could have put a, a glue dot would have been over here next to the star. So there are, play, there are ways to hide it. But I thought that little vellum on, or that glue trick on the silicone mat was a, a good one to use. So as long as you don't have big globs of glue, um, and I think I did have some big globs of glue here, uh, but let me show you, let me show you some of the other ones that I did because ignore that crash. It's just a punch. So here's, here's one that I kind of designed, but there's two things you should notice about this. First of all, the, the words are small print. So the words in the middle are harder to read because the back is a little bit busy. 
that won't be the case when I use something more solid that looks like this. But because the background is lighter and whiter, um, you also don't see any of the marks for the vellum. I mean, there's really a lot of distraction going on here. This is a pretty solid blue. I mean, you do have the stars, but it's a pretty solid blue otherwise. But did you notice how this looks like a misty moonlight embossing powder? Vellum does not absorb ink quickly. So the ink kind of lays on the surface and is wet. So all you need to do is cover it with clear embossing powder, heat it, and it looks like you have embossed in misty moonlight in this case. So that is um, just a really fun technique. Show you a couple of other of the, of the planned cards that I have for my two dozen and two hours. Now this is, these cards that I'm showing you are for the Winter Meadow Designer Series paper. I also, um, it's across the room. I'm not gonna drop another punch getting it. Um, I'm also using Shining Christmas. Um, so people have their choice. But I love this paper because it also goes for multitude of occasions. I, I, I made this a Christmas card, but it doesn't have to be a Christmas card. It, uh, you know, just change up the sentiment to happy birthday and we've got a happy birthday card. But this is in that meadow paper as well. And um, there are some snowflakes on here. I had a bunch of these snowflakes that I'd gotten off a clearance rack. And so the first, I think it's, five people that sign up for my two dozen in two hours class are going to get a package of these for free. I'm just going to throw them in and I've already got three of them taken. So if you want some, you got to sign up fast. And then here was another card and this, I thought this was a cool card. Um, I found it online, but I love the way it tied and I thought, oh, I can do that with this with this set. Again, it's a very easy card. It's just a matter of how you're cutting it. But you know, there's one stamped image, joy, and something on the inside, but it's just a little bit different because it's got this little bow. Because honestly, when I was looking online for some ideas, and you know, I I often look at other demonstrators' work, I thought. How is she getting that? Where is she sticking that ribbon on? Because I don't understand. It, like, it looks like it's in the crack, but you can't stick the ribbon on the crack because then it won't really open or it'll just be weird. But nope. I found out how she did it. And so there's another card. Just kind of unique. So though, these are three of the six designs that we're going to be using. Not gonna give you all the designs, can't give away all the secrets yet. So I'm gonna turn you back the other way. Oh, here I am, there's my hand. There's my bright face. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it was a quick, quick night. Ooh, really close, I gotta back up. Really quick and uh, I've got plenty of work to do. This place is a mess. And I'm so, I'm furiously kind of trying to get ready for the remaining classes that I have. Plus I have, don't forget, coming up on Sunday, we have our 12 Sundays of Christmas again. And then next weekend I have a team event because some of my team members are joining me uh, for On Stage at Home, which is a demonstrator only event. And I'm excited to welcome a couple of new demonstrators at that event. So thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. If you're in a place that's cold, Stay warm. If you're in a warm place, stay cool, and I will see you soon.